Well, the PROMISE HEFPEF study focuses on heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, or HEFPEF, which is the dominant form of heart failure for which, to date, we still don't have any therapies that convincingly improve outcomes. And part of the reason for that is that we don't actually understand the pathophysiology of this condition. Now, coronary microvascular dysfunction has been proposed as a novel mechanism. And just to explain a little bit of how that works is because there's lots of comorbidities in these elderly patients. It impacts coronary vasculature. They get a reduced endothelial nitric oxide production, reduced cyclic GMP production by the cardiomyocyte. And all of that leads to basically left ventricular diastolic dysfunction, which is the hallmark of HEFPEP. Now, that's all fine and good, and it's actually a very popularly accepted hypothesis. But the clinical evidence for coronary microvascular dysfunction in HEFPEP has been lacking. Um, a lot of the evidence is indirect or limited to small prospective referral samples. So our PROMISE HEFPEP study is actually the largest prospective multinational study to look at coronary microvascular dysfunction in HEFPEP and really aimed at determining the prevalence of coronary microvascular dysfunction and whether or not it's associated with known indices of heart failure severity, whether it's associated with systemic endothelial dysfunction and measurable cardiac dysfunction. So PROMISE have PEF prospectively enrolled patients with a confirmed diagnosis of have PEF from four countries. It was the United States, Sweden, Finland, and Singapore, where I'm from. And, and the interesting thing is that this was not a referral sample, but really all comer HEPPEF patients being seen at the institution, but with a confirmed diagnosis by general criteria. In other words, signs and symptoms of heart failure had to have increased natriuretic peptides or a history of heart failure or evidence, objective evidence of left ventricular hypertrophy or left atrial um, enlargement or invasively measured increased wedge pressures or an E to E prime that was increased. So this was real HEFPEF. And what we did though is um, the, the gold standard for looking at coronary microvascular dysfunction is PET, but you can't do that on a large scale. And so what we did is a validated transthoracic Doppler echo method to look at coronary flow reserve at rest and with adenosine. And with that, we were able to find, and I'm, I'm going on to the results now, that, that um, the prevalence of coronary microvascular dysfunction, which was defined as a coronary flow reserve less than 2.5, was 75%. The other important thing, of course, is that this method of looking at coronary flow reserve was very highly feasible. Uh, we could do it in 87% of the patients that we attempted it in, even in the obese. So we really think that this is a true first um, estimate of how important this is in this population. And then when we looked at the clinical, clinical correlates, we found that those with coronary microvascular dysfunction had more atrial fibrillation. They were more likely to be smokers. Um, they had a higher urinary albumin creatinine ratio despite a similar GFR. They had higher uh, right ventricular hypertrophy and right ventricular dysfunction despite similar left-sided functions. Um, and then on speckle tracking, they had worst uh, left ventricle, right ventricle, and left atrial strain. So, so when we looked at CFR or coronary flow reserve as a continuous measure, it was a very robust association that lower coronary flow reserve or worse coronary flow reserve was associated with more urinary albumin, more um, higher NT pro BNP, more evidence of systemic endothelial dysfunction by endopat measurements and more evidence of all-round cardiac dysfunction. And so this is really the first study to show that convincingly and opens up that coronary microvascular dysfunction may be a promising, no pun intended, um, overall risk marker of risk and a therapeutic target in HEPPEF. So the results of this study uh, doesn't include a therapeutic modality that we have tested, but it opens the door. It basically opens the door to therapeutics aimed at coronary microvascular dysfunction 
And it's very critically important because so far, as I said earlier, the evidence has largely been preclinical or indirect. Well, I, I suppose validation is always something that needs to be done, um, but this is the largest study already. I think that this is ready to go into considered uh, clever trials uh, that may be aimed at coronary microvascular dysfunction, and I hope to be talking to you about that soon one day.